Last time, I did talk about non-experimental quantitative researches and their sample research titles. Today, we are going to discuss the types of experimental research and their sample research titles. So what is experimental research? Experimental research is undertaken when a researcher wishes to trace the cause and effect relationships between defined variables. So how do we work on our experimental research? The first thing that we need to do is to identify a problem that we have in the community or the environment that we are in. Since I am a teacher, one of the common problems I encounter inside the classroom is there are really students who have poor reading comprehension skill. Before I could design an intervention program that could help me solve this problem, the second thing that I need to do is to trace its causes. I need to search online and to read a lot of studies that might have lead me in identifying the causes of these problems. It might be because the reading selection I'm giving them is not appropriate to their reading level or it might be because they have limited vocabulary. Right after researching and scrutinizing the root cause of this problem, I could then identify and select an appropriate intervention program that may help me with this problem. It's the third process, it is designing or selecting an intervention program. It might be intervention program you read from a study you have researched and you would like to try if this intervention program is effective in your own context. Then after designing an intervention program, we can then make an experiment. We need to test out this intervention program, how effective it is. We could say that the intervention program is effective if the reading comprehension level of the participants have significantly improved right after we employ this intervention program. So those are the processes we could follow in order for us to make an experimental research. So I'm going to be introducing two different types of experimental research. The first one is true experimental research and the other one is quasi-experimental research. Now let us have a deeper understanding and discussion on each of these types. True experimental research, an intervention program is always present. So it aims to determine the causal relationship among variables. So it is still determining the cause-effect relationship between or among our variables. So we would like to check if this intervention program has positive, negative, or neutral effect to the participants in the experimental research. Another classification of true experimental is we can make this experiment even with or without pretest. Last classification for true experimental research is it randomly selects participants. When we talked about randomly, it means we are not purposively selecting respondents or participants in, the, in this research. Then another thing is true experimental has control group or test or experimental group. So basically, we are dividing our participants into two different groups, the control group and then the test or experimental group. Now, what's the difference between the two? Now let's take a look at the true experimental process as if we have this control group and experimental group. For example, we have this title, Castor Oil as a Wart Remover. You could already see what is the problem. Now the problem is the wart, right? And we want to remove the wart. What is the intervention we're going to use in order to remove the warts? We could use castor oil. We are testing out our intervention if castor oil is effective as a wart remover. So we have to randomly select our participants and then divide them into two different categories. The first group will be called as control group and then the other group is the experimental group or the test group. With control group, everything is held constant or regular, meaning we are not using any intervention at all. We are not definitely applying any can castor oil to the affected part. So they'll just simply using the same regular soap that they are using every day. So what happens to to our test or experimental group? With a test and experimental group, of course, definitely we are going to employ the intervention program with them. So we are going to be putting castor oil to the warts or to the affected area. So our experimental group, we can actually manipulate our variables. We can vary the amount applied to the affected area. Example, this participant might be applying a small amount only of the castor oil to his or her wart, while this participant naman will put a generous amount of castor oil to the affected area. In this way, we could differentiate which amount has a better effect on the participant. We can also manipulate the variable by varying the frequency of the application. 
one participant may apply it twice a week, the other may apply it once a week, or the third participant might be applying it every day. In this way, we have we could build a varying results and we could tell which variable or which process of application is effective. Castor oil as a wart remover could be a title we could use in our science subject. This one, I'm going to be giving you another title. This is podcasting and students listening skills. We can actually use this one in our language subjects and social sciences subjects. Now, how do we make the process of conducting this kind of title? It's the same process as we did earlier since this is true experimental process. It's the same thing. First thing we need to do is to randomly select our participants, divide them into two categories, the control group and the experimental group. With control group, again, we are not employing any podcasting or intervention program to the teaching learning process of the students. We just need to go on to the traditional lesson or traditional learning strategy we are using in enhancing students listening skills what with test and experimental group we need to utilize the intervention program which is the podcast i don't know if you're familiar with podcast podcast is an audio content though podcasting is not really that famous here in the philippines but you could start it in your own classroom and check if it really works with your students and with the learning process Variables can be manipulated, like we can vary, like for a certain student or for a certain group of students, we are using podcasting as our intervention program for a month, while a certain participant naman or a group of participants will be using this intervention program for more than a month, may it, six months maybe. And we can vary also the approach of teacher when it comes to teaching podcasting. And the second type of experimental research, this is what we call quasi-experimental research. So, what are the classifications of quasi-experimental research? First, it's the same with true experimental research because both of them have intervention. Second, it still has the same characteristic with the true experimental because both of them aim to determine the causal relationships among variables. So, there we are still going to be seeing the results of the intervention program we employ at a certain problem or at a certain area. However, one of the differences that they have is with quasi-experimental research, we are not allowed to randomly select our participants. We are purpose purposefully selecting the participants that we have for our experimental research. With true experimental, as I said earlier, it's okay not to conduct a pretest. It can be experimented with or without pretest. However, with quasi experimental research, it always has pretest and post test because we have to check the significant difference right after employing the intervention program that we select. So now let us try learning the processes involved in conducting a quasi experimental research. I'm going to be using my own action research title i'm currently working on this one it's vlogging and students speaking competence since i am an oral communication teacher i really need to enhance my students speaking competence because there are really students who are not confident enough and who are not really good at speaking their point so i need to enhance this and i'm going to be using vlogging as my intervention program so how am i going to do it first I need to conduct a pretest right after recording and identifying the students who have poor speaking competence. These students will serve as my participants in employing the intervention program, which is vlogging. Since I already identified the students who are going to be my participants, I'm going to proceed to the conduct of intervention program, gather them together and oriented about the nature of the study. Right after that, I gave my learning plans, my lessons, and the speaking tasks using vlogging. So it's the same setup with true experimental because with quasi experimental, we can still manipulate our variables in terms of the duration of the program employed, the length of the vlog, etc., depending on the researcher's choice. Uh, I employ vlogging in my daily lesson to check if there will be a significant improvement right after employing this intervention program to my students. 
The last thing that a researcher will do is to conduct and examine again the participant's speaking competence right after conducting the intervention program. So we will do a post-test right after employing vlogging. So if they gained a significant improvement after the program, we can conclude that vlogging is an effective strategy that improves student speaking competence. I hope you have learned something, but before I end this vlog, let me give you a summary first. What is experimental research again? Experimental research is undertaken when a researcher wishes to trace the cause and effect relationships between and among variables. So there are two different types of experimental research, the true experimental and the quasi-experimental. With true experimental, First, we need to randomly select the participants and divide them into two different groups, the control group and the experimental or test group. Control group, well, we will not use any intervention program with this group, while with experimental or test group, we are going to use the, the intervention program with them and then we are going to differentiate their differences as they go along the process. Now, with quasi-experimental naman, we cannot randomly select our participants. First, we have to set a pre-test. We have to conduct first a pre-test. And after conducting a pre-test, we are going to identify who among these participants have lower results or have failed results and after identifying who among these participants have failed results these are the group of people we are going to use as participants in the conduct of the intervention program after doing the intervention program we then proceed to the post test and examining again whether they have a significant improvement right after employing the intervention program that we selected or that we designed so I hope you have learned something today. Thank you again for listening to my vlog. I would like to say to everyone that we need to keep on learning.